Well, hello, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Kick Out. I go by the name of Skillet. My name's Tay, and my name is Mix. And we haven't done an episode for a couple of weeks now. How many? How long has it been now, Mix? A few weeks now, isn't it? Maybe about two weeks. It's about two weeks. It seems longer. I'm going to say three weeks. I feel like it's been three weeks. I don't think it's been three weeks. I just think a lot has happened in the two weeks we haven't spoken. Right. You are right. A lot has happened in the two weeks that we haven't done a podcast. We have so much to talk about in today's episode because we have a special review of last night's pay-per-view, which is WrestleMania Backlash. But before we do that, hey, you got lovely hair. What is going on? Yeah. <laughs> Trying something new, you know. It's just, it's just that's what it is. It's just a new hair day. It's new hair no day. Occasion. Nothing no, you want to tell your boy about. Something coming down the line, you know. Something I might have to get invited to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Me wearing a suit or something. You know? <laughs> All right. And Max, how are you, my friend? I'm good, man. I'm I'm good. A bit tired because I stayed up to watch the pay per view last night. Oh, you watched that live? Yeah, I, I, I don't oh. know why. I, I just, I didn't kind of give myself anything to do today at work. So I thought, let me stay up and watch it live. Um, It was worth it, in my opinion. But yeah, I could have done with a sleep just watching it in the daytime like a regular person. Okay, well, before we break down the, the last night's pay-per-view, which I totally forgot was happening until this morning, uh, let's talk about a few things in the world of wrestling. Uh Obviously, it's been a few weeks now, but the blood and guts match happened at AEW, AEW's version of War Games. You had uh, the Pinnacle versus the Inner Circle. Uh, Tay, I'm not sure you watched this match or not. No. Uh, it, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, but Max, let me hear from you. What was your thoughts on the blood and guts match? I thought it was a really good match. I thought it was different from, you know, uh, NXT War Games match is very much spot 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 as in like wrestling spot and stuff given the arena and the kind of thing they're kind of caged in um, and but this was like an actual fight in between it like there was no real wrestling done within this it was just pure fight pure brutality um obviously the main talking point was how it ended with jericho on top of the the cell and then getting pushed off onto this bouncy castle looking thing which they probably would have got away with if um if they like videoed it right if the videography production was correct on it but um yeah i mean he has to fall onto something like that no one wants him to hurt himself but for, that being said he actually i think they said he's broken his arm so um yeah i don't know how that happened but yeah i think again just another production thing with AEW we've seen this we've seen the the barbed wire death match that never exploded so Maybe put it down to them being like a new company that get these things right. But other than that, I thought the Blood and Guts match was pretty good. Yeah, me too. I've I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it just it it, it kind of you see how even though NXT when they do their War Games match, they do want to pay homage to NWA with the you know the War Games match. I kind of feel like AEW did a real good job, a job. of paying homage to NWA. It, it felt like I was watching NWA in the eighties. So. Kudos to AW there. Uh, I know a lot of people have been talking about MJF after this match, saying that he's going to be the next big thing since The Rock. Or he's got kind of rock-like stardom qualities. I don't see that personally, but I do see him being a big star going forward, for sure. I think he's he's going to be one of those versus, if it, if it does happen, because it might not happen, but if it does happen where WWE might, you know, acquire his services, that will get like a massive pop, you know what I mean? Uh, so I could see, I could see a lot of bright things for MJF. But yeah, um, I don't know. What do you think of that, man? You think you think I'm right there? Yeah, I think. I mean, it's. I know these guys and girls will come out and they're like, they they're happy with AEW, they want to stay there. But let's be honest, if it wasn't for two years ago, like WWE is still the destination. That's what you grew up on. That's why you probably wanted to become a wrestler. So, yeah. I can imagine, and to be honest, it would fit in MJF's character, you know, that he's he's kind of sold himself to the highest bidder. Like, why am I going to stay loyal to AEW? WWE came with big money, big contracts, I'm gone. Like, that's that's his that plays right into his character. So, 
um, yeah, I, I think one day we could possibly see him there, even though he's kind of flirted with it being true and not being true. And, you know, the, the, the fact he's putting it in conversation from now is probably just getting people ready for it when it happens. Yeah. Yeah, so what sure. is it? Is it just his character or is it like his wrestling ability as well? What makes him the star? Character, ba- character wise, he's, he's he he's he's got it down to a T, and his wrestling is not bad. He's actually not a bad wrestler. He's actually a good worker. But yeah, character wise, he's got it down to a T. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a he's a hated heel. He's bringing he's it a, back. To the type of news. He's very. So if much... he comes in, do you think he will be like a Kevin Owens in that kind of? He's that like mold. He he's he's, he's very much. He's very much the Chris Jericho Miz kind of heel. Um, that kind of mold, similar to Kevin Owen in some ways, but um, I just think he's just building his star so much now, like, yeah, and he's what 25, 26, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah by the yeah. time he's maybe mid 30s, and if he does want to go to WWE or maybe even earlier than that, um, 30, then yeah, this they're gonna roll out the red carpet for him, he's gonna be mega. Let's talk about NXT, uh, a new faction formed on NXT called the Hit Row. Um, this is uh Swerve Scott faction. Uh, can you mention the names of the members of this faction for me, Max? And tell me your thoughts on Hit Row. So, we have Swerve Scott, the, the leader. I'm guessing, um, we all know Swerve Scott. We have Top Dollar, who is um AJ Francis, I think. He was um, he's the host of the AE series of the documentaries happening. Um, at the minute, um, we have Brianna Brandy, who is now known as B Fab, um, another kind of legit rapper, singer in the industry, been on tour with Juicy J and stuff like that. Um, been in NXT for maybe about two or three years now in developmental. And um, Adonis, what's his name? Ashante D. Adonis. Um, I think he signed to NXT couple years ago now seen him in 205 live nxt a bit um just hasn't really found his feet i guess until now so yeah what did you think of the promo on the debut? I, thought, I thought it was i think swerve scott delivered yeah for and sure. i thought top dollar delivered um ah. Yeah, I think, you know, he done the whole... All of them were kind of doing the kind of rap, kind of bars thing within their promos. I think Top Dollar was really good, but I think that comes from him being a host. Maybe, you know, he's used to the mic and stuff. Um, Ashanti Diodonis and B-Fab, they were okay. Nothing special. Got their points across but um, and their characters, but I just think it's just an experience thing where Swerve and Top Dollar have that maybe experience being in front of a mic and all of that kind of stuff. These other two haven't as as much yet, but as a package, they, they look good. Yeah, they do look good together. I just, I'm not sure, I'm not really uh, ready for this yet. I don't think they're even ready for it yet, to be honest, but we'll see how time goes. Hopefully they have improved. I do think Swerve definitely on the mic, absolutely outstanding. I just for the others it was a bit awkward to watch for me. Like, it was a bit cringe. It was a bit cringe worthy. I don't know if Tay. I don't know if you watched this promo, Tay. I haven't seen the promo yet. I've just seen a couple media shots of them. I was like, okay. But they, they do. Look, yeah, they look good together. I would say that much. They definitely look good together. So you know, hopefully, as time goes on, we'll get better on the mic. But yeah, okay. We'll, see. we'll give it a go. We'll see what happens. It's something new, isn't it? I guess it's something new. You know? yeah. Um. I'm going to say a few things outside the ring before we start talking about uh, Backlash, WrestleMania. Um, be a Priestley, Priest, uh, Priestley might join NXT UK. Did you hear about this, Mac? Yeah. Um, so she finished up with her stuff with Stardom in Japan and New Japan if, in any affiliation she has there quite some time ago. Um, she... I don't want to say broke up, but they had like a f- kind of fake on-screen split with her and her boyfriend, Will Ospreay. So... Um, yeah, it's been rumored for a minute that she she may turn up in obviously NXT, NXT UK, AEW, and it looks like it's gonna be NXT UK. Tamina wins her first WWE title. Uh, Tay, Tamina wins the tag team title with Natalia. Why, why did you not do this at WrestleMania? <laughs> exactly, exactly my point. Um, I mean, it was a good moment for her. It was a good moment for me. Um. I said Tamina hasn't won a title. I'm not <laughs> the biggest fan of Tamina anyway. But if she had to win a title, this was probably the better one to give her, to be fair. 
They had pyro as she cried. Max, did you feel emotional watching this? I was happy for her. Um, Natalia looked more emotional than Tamina did. Um, maybe it's just one of them ones where, you know, you've come up with someone and you think, oh, they deserve it and all of that kind of stuff. So fair enough. Um, apparently, they, well, the, the reaction to her night two match with against the tag team champions, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, and the crowd screaming for Tamina to get the win is the reason that they're pushing her or they've pushed her now to this point. So they never expected anyone to care, particularly about this match. But because of the crowd's reaction on night two WrestleMania during the women's tag match, that's why she's got this push and that's why they've become tag team champions. Andrade in talks with AEW. Would you want to see Andrade in a w in AEW ring? Max? I think so. I think he's he's good enough to, to obviously hang with them man over there. Um do you wow. think it will happen? Do you think do you think the rumors are true or do you think it's just rumors? Mm, like he I think I think there's some truth to it. Like he's the biggest, he's the biggest. I mean, sorry, AEW's the you know the biggest promotion after WWE in North America. So if he's gonna stay in North America, that's ideally where he wants to be. Um I don't know if of, if they've struck a deal or anything yet, but I would like to see him there. But, Tay, would you yeah. like to see the Andrade in uh, AEW? Yeah, I agree. Um, he should be. I mean, it, it, he's not going to leave Charlotte. <laughs> well, he could, but he's not going to leave Charlotte to go elsewhere. So if he's going to stay here, he's probably he's not. If he doesn't go back to WWE, which I do think they're going to go to AEW, I'm sure they'll be happy to have him as well. Did you guys um, see who his first um, matches? Yeah, Kenny like, Omega. Like, Kenny Omega. No, nah. <laughs> like he, he, he sent he sent for Kenny Omega. Um, but that's happening. Though. You know, that's actually, happen. that's actually gonna happen. It probably will happen. Yeah, it probably yeah. will happen. But I think that that's not till December or so, right? Um, but he's actually got a first booked match with after who? his ninety day non compete. Del with Rio. Who? Oh yeah, no, I knew about that. I knew about that. I knew about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that should be a good match. Be interesting. I mean, Del Rio is he's a controversial one, ain't he? I think he's. I think Del Rio is currently on bail, <laughs> <laughs> so there's actually yeah. doubts that that match is actually going to happen because he might have had. He might have been sentenced by the time that match comes around. But do you guys remember when Paige stabbed him up in the head? Do, do you guys remember that? Yeah, man. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, hey, Zelina Vega has been spotted at the performance center. She may be making a return, and rumor has it. She might be making a return with The Rock's daughter, Simone Johnson. You know, they're really close in real life. Uh, Zelina Vega and The Rock's daughter, Simone Johnson. Would you like to see them do as a bit of a double act at WWE? I mean, I, I've never seen The Rock's daughter wrestle, so I don't know how, I don't know what that's going to be like, but I am happy for Zelina to be back. Um, I don't even know why they let her go in the first place or see just to, to third party rubbish but that was no reason to let her go um i was saying she's an excellent manager and whoever she's with will benefit a lot so it's probably good that they're putting her with someone new actually so i'm assuming max um for selena vega to be parting up with the rock's daughter the rock's daughter might not have the charisma you know the, the talking chops like her father does what do you think of that hey eh? I, I, I don't know i don't really know and like you said they're friends and um, you know, The Rock done that film, the Pages film. I can't remember what the name was. And Zelina Vega played the role of AJ Lee. So, like, the connection is there. Who knows? The Rock might have even had the hand in getting her back into WWE. Um, but yeah, apparently that this has been in the pipeline for a while. Um, it's not. It's not new. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know if there's anything between those two or yet. They said that you know they were filmed together, but. Like you said, this may be a managerial thing, could be a tag team thing because they've obviously got they've got a tag division in NXT now as well for the women. So um, yeah, could it could be interesting, but um, hopefully, like it's reported, Zelina is back. Okay, uh, Max, do you have any other news we can talk about before we talk about this uh, pay per view that took place last night? Um, 
Not that I can remember. I've been watching loads of wrestling documentaries again. I've got I've got the bug for watching wrestling documentaries all over again. And I've been watching the Stone Cold Booker T and the Roddy Piper one that's on A on E, the the WWE on A and E documentaries. So I would recommend yeah. anyone to watch those because even though these stories has been told in a WWE capacity in terms of like the network or whatever, uh, there's some extra footage that they don't show and that they do have, and and they and they lean a bit more to the story that you wasn't told. Some certain things that you hasn't been told from these WWE documentaries that they tell you in these docu and in these A on E documentaries. So yeah, I would say definitely worth a watch. I've been watching Dark Side of the Ring. I saw the Brian Pillman Part One, Part Two episodes. Crazy. Um, I didn't watch. There was one on um, Backyard Wrestling, wasn't it? Am I, I right about it? that? No, not that I've seen. I think there's a new one out. I think Moxley's in it. But yeah, I haven't watched. That's the one Nick yet. Nick Gage. Oh, it's about Nick Gage. Yeah, yeah. Nick Gage. Oh, okay. There's one about him. Oh, and then the A and E um, documentary on Shawn Michaels is out today. So, and there was an A and E documentary on Macho Man as well that I haven't watched. I'm going to watch as well. Yeah, so, I think. Uh, yeah, so, so there's one on Shawn Michaels. So how? Like, what? What are the wrestlers they doing? Do you know? Or did it throw them out? It just this seems to be throwing out one every so week. Like, I don't know, yeah. And there is, after the pay-per-view last night of Backlash WrestleMania, uh, the episode two of Icons is now on the network with Rob Van Dam. So they've obviously delayed Icons because they probably wanted to film the Hall of Fame stuff. stuff. First, yeah. And obviously the David Boy Smiths, because it's going to be an episode of David Boy Smith, so they probably delayed that for that. Now the RVD one. And I know there's a Beth Phoenix one part of this icon series as well so yeah okay all right interesting all right should we talk about backlash wrestlemania sure. uh, which took place at the thunderdome um i think the first match i remember watching was sheamus versus ricochet which was on the pre-show um, but there was nothing before that match to talk about was there max anything noteworthy i know bobby rude and dove ziggler attacked dominic mysterio backstage yeah. but that's really it isn't it there was nothing else yeah, Jimmy right. Uso calling Jay Uso a bitch again. Oh yeah, that bit there. But yeah, that's yeah. uh, I really like the build up to this. Uh, that the, the the Usos and the Reigns and the Cesaro stuff. I really like that. That was actually quite enjoyable. And not watching, I didn't watch SmackDown week week by week recently. So watching that as a promo package was actually quite cool. But um, Tay, did you watch the kickoff match with uh, Sheamus and Ricochet? No, I did not. <laughs> uh, Max, did you watch it? I caught. Just before the finish, so I didn't. I didn't know there was a kickoff show match. Like Sheamus probably didn't know there was a kickoff show match until minutes before he went out there. But yeah, he's having he's having these non-title um, challenges. I think, I think this was a title match. I think it was, was non-title. <laughs> it's just it's. I don't know what he's doing. He's eventually going to get. Obviously, the GM is going to stick it on him. Like he keeps having these non-title um, US Championship matches or whatever. Ricochet came out in like his street gear. Yeah. Um, and I yeah, flew around for a bit, got put away by something that wasn't Seamus's finisher. Yeah, um, grabbed Seamus's hat, you know, um, Jake Paul style, and um, started dancing around and kind of mocking Seamus. And yeah, I don't know what this thing is with baby faces losing and then you know, mm. mocking the heel, and then that's like their win. But so, so they're gonna continue this, aren't they? Because I actually, I'm gonna lie, I, I actually enjoyed their chemistry, Sheamus and Ricochet. They actually had some good stuff in the ring, but uh, I didn't know, it was, I didn't know it was a non-title match. I thought uh, maybe it was a title match, and then Ricochet would lose, and then they'll have another match. But no, it was a non-title match. So Ricochet yeah. loses the non-title match, <laughs> yeah. and then they're gonna go forward with more matches. This doesn't make sense, but okay. So Seamus wins that one. Uh, I think the opening match was the triple threat, wasn't it? Asuka, Rhea Ripley, and Charlotte Flair. Tay, let's go to you first. Did you, A, enjoy Charlotte Flair's entrance with the queen kind of look in her ring attire with the, all the rooks on her attire? That was pretty cool. Look a bit Coella, like Coella Deville. Like Coella Deville, but with the, the cards as well, kind of like the Royal Flush gang if you know your dc like from alice in wonderland as alice in wonderland there we go the queen there we go that's what it was isn't it off with the off with your head it was, it was actually that it was the alice in wonderland queen um asuka and Ruby, did you enjoy this match tape i really did um i mean i wouldn't expect anything less from these three to be honest like it was hard hitting <laughs> like asuka was giving it to them Rhea was giving it to them charlotte was giving it to them so it was a good match kind of all around um I wasn't really sure on who was going to win because I was thinking, okay, Charlotte's back now. 
So you know how they are like, okay, give Charlotte the belt. But I was happy that Rhea kept the belt on this one. I mean, they all did really good. So. Yeah. Max, did it do ask her any flavors that she took the fall? Um, again, not not really, not really. Um, I think we all know Charlotte's not getting pinned, so um, and this is obviously going to be Charlotte's out to be like, oh, you didn't pin me, give me a rematch. Um, but yeah, I think someone has to take the loss. Unfortunately, it was Asuka, but she, you know, like Tay said, she looked good in defeat. Um. Charlotte, I think, adding to these guys. Obviously, we've seen these guys a few times since WrestleMania go at it. Charlotte really added something, I think, and um, all of them, all of them really brought it. To be honest, um, this was the best I've probably seen Asuka in some months. So, yeah, did a really good match to open the show. What's this? Uh, are they doing a program? Because I haven't been watching wrestling much, but is there going to be a program like an internet storyline between Charlotte and uh, Alexa Bliss? Is, did, am I right about that? Or? That's what seems to be the rumour that um, Alexa Bliss's doll is going to maybe take control of Charlotte. Um, and yeah, to be honest, I think that's probably how they're going to get the belt on Charlotte. And then the whole crowd is going to you know, go mad. But it's like, oh, well, Charlotte's not controlling herself. She's being controlled. I, I, I don't know. But... Do you think, was because people, I think there was talks on Twitter that people thought that Charlotte was showing some sort of elements of darkness in this match. I didn't catch that personally. I just thought Charlotte was just being a badass as she is. But people are going on like, she's transferring into the dark side. I, I mean, it, did you guys pick that up too? I, 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 I saw people saying that stuff, but same with you. I didn't really notice anything. Tay, did you notice anything? Um, I didn't notice anything, but I can see where they would get that angle from. Just so she, I mean, she's obviously changed a little bit and it's She's got new hair and whatever. But that doesn't necessarily mean that she's going to go to the dark side. Her makeup was a bit darker. That doesn't mean anything too tough. I mean, it could just be a new look she's going for. But, I mean, if it does go that way, then I guess that way. Okay. Uh, <laughs> next up, we had the Dirty Dogs, Dolph Ziggler and <laughs> Robert Rude. <laughs> Sorry, that, that name tickles me. Um, versus Dominic uh, Mysterio and Rey Mysterio for the uh, SmackDown tag team titles. Max, what was your thoughts on this match? I thought this was a really good match. Obviously, well, it was, it was versus Rey Mysterio until Dominic Mysterio came out. Came out. But um, I thought this was a really good match. I'm not sure it required 15 minutes of Rey Mysterio surviving before his son came out. Um, this was the second longest match after the main event, which was kind of mad from a tag division they don't really care about. And I've never seen Rey Mysterio kick out of so many moves before because he's forever this underdog person, which you know you can beat easily because of his size and stuff. That's all how they've always kind of booked him. But um, Dominic Mysterio getting the frog splash, and when they he done the frog splash, they referenced Eddie Guerrero and obviously everything that them lot did <laughs> in two thousand and five or whenever it was. Um, I just thought this was a it was a good feel good moment, you know, for father and son. Um, I saw Baba Baba Ray or Bully Ray tweet that you know they should have waited till the pay per view next month because next month's pay per view actually falls on Father's Day in the US. Um, so they should have pulled the trigger then. I mean, they should have pulled the trigger since WrestleMania, so I'm not really sure it matters. But I mean, yeah, let's let's be, let's be honest. Moment. Let's be honest. Ever since the day we saw Dominic step into WWE, we knew this moment was going to come. We we <laughs> knew that they were going to give them the titles. So, so am I right in thinking this is the first ever father and son tag team champions in what? the WWE? Right, because that's what I was, I was thinking. That can't be the first ever. So, do you know who was outside of WWE? I wrote it down this morning, but I've, I've lost my piece of paper. It was on, but it, it, it was it, someone, it, it was another team outside the WWE. Is it the Armstrongs? Bullet Bomb Armstrong and one of his many Armstrong sons. If you, I could be wrong there though. I'm just assuming. One I'm of them, I think, was called Frank or something. But I can't. Remember. I can't remember to be sure. But yeah. Okay. They're the first in WWE anyway. First father son tag team championship WWE. By the end of this podcast, I'm gonna search who was the other 
first ever father son tag team champions. The real first. Gonna see how it compares. Mm. Um, Tay, did you enjoy this match? Did you think uh, I, you know, is that typical booking? One's injured. The, the, the other wrestler's gonna carry it. This one being Rey Mysterio, and of course, Rey Mysterio is excellent, so it, it is quite convincing that he would handle Rude and Ziggler, but. The sun to calm down and catch the wind with the frog splash. You know, did you feel this could have been booked better or were you happy with this? I mean, yeah, it was a typical booking. Um, but you got it was the feel good moment at the end. That's all that really it really was. Um, like Mex said, it didn't need to be this long. I enjoyed the match, but it really didn't need to be that long because we knew what was we knew what was coming. We knew they were gonna drop the titles, we knew that they were gonna get it. You could have done that in five, seven minutes. Um if they were, I mean, they could have been much more creative with it. I, I feel like creative are being stifled a bit at this moment because quite a lot of stuff is quite repetitive anyway, and they're doing the same things within the matches. So I don't really expect anything different from this one, but it was a nice match at the end. It was a nice moment. Um, I also forgot to mention in our news segment of this episode, rest in peace to New Jack. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, uh, a very controversial wrestling figure. Um, I'm not going to come on here and act like I was a big fan of his work because I was not. He did a lot of stuff I did not agree with. But at the same time, you have to admire, you know, a lot of stuff he did do in the wrestling industry in terms of being brave to speak out on racism in, with, with, you know, with white America. Uh, <laughs> he's a lot of controversial things uh big enough oj when that was taboo um and but yeah he he caught one of the best promos you will ever see in in in, in a wrestling segment in um the deep smoky south smoky mountain one smoky mountain territory of jim cornet uh, i first heard of new jack in ecw when me and my brothers used to watch ecw pay-per-views in the late 90s and I remember him coming out to um, Ice Cube and Dr. Dre, America's um, Natural Born Killers, sorry, Natural Born Killers. And I just remember me and my friends laughing hysterically because in the, the matches, throughout the match, say the match was 15 minutes, <laughs> this song would loop for 15 <laughs> minutes throughout the whole match. And he will always have objects that he'll come out to the ring with. It would either be like a trash can full of like kendo sticks, barbed wire bats, a keyboard, like a PC keyboard, <laughs> sometimes tables. He will come out with staplers. He will come out with like stun guns. He was just a proper gangster. And, and you know, the way he would wrestle, he would smack somebody with a keyboard and run, do like run off, run off outside the ring, come back into the ring, hit them with another thing. It was kind of comedy at the same time. So he knew how to do a lot of comedy timing with his wrestling. But yes, as times went on, he went a bit more crazier and savage and, that tribute Paul Heyman, did anyone see that tribute Paul Heyman did for him on Talking Smack? He got yeah. really emotional. I was very surprised to see that because, you know, WWE never had, apart from having that footage of ECW and, on, and having the ECW DVD that they did, they never really had New Jack in the WWE programming ever. There was rumors that they were going to get him at the, um, the 2004 storyline with Carlito and John Cena. He was supposed to be the one that stabs John Cena, but they changed that to Jesus. Um, that would have been interesting to see, but yeah, rest in peace, New Jack, man. Um, a one of a kind, that's, that's all I will say. No, I agree. Let's go back to another match that was one of a kind, and uh, I didn't want to see anything like this ever again. Uh, Damien Priest took on the Miz in the Lumberjack match with zombies. Uh, Tay, let's go to you first. I mean. When I saw him open the door on the on the um on the promo and there was just zombies in the room, I was like, please just no, just don't do this. And then I saw them coming down the ramp and just like clawing at the ring. And I was like, this is you know when someone has an idea and everyone just says yes, and no one says, This is ridiculous, like this is silly, what are you doing? Like, everyone's just said yes to this dumb idea, and it's gone ahead. And I was like, what am I watching? Why? What? It, it was unnecessary. <laughs> it was unnecessary. I really didn't need to see that. So I was so <laughs> confused watching this. Was this to promote that film Batista's in with Zack Snyder? Is yeah, that, I think it's called Army of the Dead. Okay, so it's about zombies. So it's about, yeah. so it's about zombies. Okay. 
and because they must be getting a fat check from that comp that that production studio that film studio that's probably why no one argued against this idea but, but isn't it mad that this this is going to be on netflix this film is going to come out in the cinemas and be on netflix apparently and obviously wwe have just done this big move to peacock and they're here promoting something that's going to be on their their whole rivals show and not even just oh watch army of the dead when it comes out they're including it in the actual programming to that's this extent batista is out here tweeting i don't know if you saw he was tweeting like I, I ain't got nothing to do with this like this is trash like <laughs> Batista has been very vocal recently. He was cussing WWE about how they're booking Asuka, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, not, he been, hasn't been happy about that either. Um, wow, Army of Dead. So Zombies became the lumberjack in this Damien Priest versus Miz match. Uh, there was a point where Damien Priest and Miz was fighting the zombies together. Then it came to a point where they just continued wrestling and uh, the zombies were just... Every time Damien Priest get thrown out the ring, they'll throw him back in the ring on the zombie. The zombies knew the rules of this love jam. <laughs> but you know the problem though, like zombies should have been, they should have been in the ring. Like if they're zombies, they're a rule unto themselves. They should have been in the ring all the time. Like, you know, Scotty Too Hot, he was one of the zombies. Don't say that. Yeah. That's, you know, remember, you see the zombie that popped out from under the announcer's table. Was that him? That was yeah. Scotty Too Hot. I recognized his face, but I was like, oh, I don't quite know. Yeah, I, I recognize it. And there's someone kind of confirmed it online as well. But he works at NXT. So obviously the rest of them were like developmental talents as, as always. But for me, yeah, it's like uh, Damien Priest has been on the main roster for four or five months now. Debuted in the Rumble. Biggest moment so far today is still when he eliminated Kane in that Rumble. They've put him in a high profile match with B Bad Bunny at WrestleMania. And Bad Bunny has stole the show. And they've now come and put him in, I guess, in what they would have thought as another high-profile thing with promoting this film. And it's just fallen flat. Like, they clearly rate this guy. But it's like, he's not actually showcasing himself on these big stages that you're putting him on. And he's a bad boy, you know? He's a, I, he's I, love, hard, I, love, I love Fabian Priest. I rate him so highly. And they just, I don't know they just, what they're doing, bro. He's, he's, his career's done. <laughs> you, you, I know what I saw people saying this. Like, do you do you where do you guys think he <laughs> you think he's actually done or you just in jest yeah, or like yeah, I, you I, I, it's kind of like where do you go from here? Like you put him in these like comedian this, this comedy match. What are you are you putting him with like Otis now? Like where are you going with him? He can't be a bad man anymore. You was in a match with zombies. It's true. Tay's right. Like, like I say I say it in jest. But Tay's Tay's so spot on. It's like, how you gonna how you gonna take this man seriously now? I can't. Like with Miz, he can kind of get away with it. Because Miz, Miz does comedy acts and Miz does silliness. Like Damien Priest just come on the scene and I don't this is not this is not good. And it just reminded me of like ECW when they tried to reboot it with that zombie storyline. Uh yeah. I see <laughs> Mor Morrison is a big time joke. Like my brother, shout out to my brother K Knight, my brother Andres. Like he doesn't watch wrestling like I used to, but he still remembers like certain wrestlers that are good. So he, I think he must have walked in, in my flat and he saw me watching wrestling and he was like, "Oh, Morrison's back." He was like, "Oh, he was good. He was good." And I, I think it was the WrestleMania. It was WrestleMania, and he was like, "What's this joke thing that it got him doing?" I was like, "Bro, he's a joke now." So like, what? Yeah, he's just like. I think Alice's favorite wrestlers always gets treated like jokes, so he stopped watching it. <laughs> and it, this is another thing I can see somebody following like like Damian Priest's career from Ring of Honor. I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is the guy. Let me show you about this guy. See this guy here, yeah. I've been telling man about Martinez. this guy, yeah. Punishment Martinez, yeah. Bad boy wrestler, yeah. Watch him, watch him. Oh shit, he's wrestling zombies. <laughs> but, like, it's a, it's it's over. Sorry, Damian. I hope it's not. I hope they do something with him, but I have no confidence that they will. No, they definitely need to reward him for, for this bullshit. Like, <laughs> he needs a big win somehow. They just give him the US title. Just give it to him. Let him fight Sheamus in the next pay-per-view. Let him win. That's, that's how you're going to redeem him. That's it. Yeah, that's a good shout. He needs to beat Sheamus for the open challenge. Tay, you're a bad girl. And, and, and if that does happen, I'm shouting out Tay on Twitter. Because I think it probably will. 100%. I think it probably will still. All right. Uh, let's take a break uh, from reviewing this uh, pay-per-view. Because we got a special interview to play. Uh, on Friday, just gone, I was invited to Stratford Hotel. 
uh, where I got to meet some of the NXT UK wrestlers, and I sat down for this episode. For this episode, we're going to talk about the rest of the wrestlers in the next episode, and the episode after that, we got to spread it out. Um, I got to sit down with the NXT UK Women's Champion Kaylee Ray and Rampage Brown as we talk about their journey from uh, starting up as wrestlers to becoming wrestlers today. Okay, BBC One Extra and Kick Out Podcast fans, I am here with uh, Rampage and the NXT UK Women's Champion, Kaylee Ree. How are you guys today? I am fantastic, thank you very much. Copacetic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, before I talk to you about your careers and ask you some individual questions about your journey to, to uh, becoming a wrestler today, um, how is it? first and foremost, at the Performance Centre in in UK and BT Sports, that, that venue that they have there. Um, what is that like, wrestling there with no crowd at the moment because of COVID, obviously? Um, you have to do so much more now with your job. Like, What is that feeling like for you guys? See, it's, it's a very different experience. Like, We drive on that crowd, yeah. we go with the noise and all this, but I'd be lying if I didn't say once I go in there and that bell goes, I'm in the zone mm-hmm. and I am... I don't, I don't care if there's no one there cheering or booing for me. Like, I've got a job to do and I'm going in there to keep my title. Like, the BT Studios is becoming, like, our home now. It really is, yeah. And really on is. the back of what I've just said, I can't wait until we can get a crowd in there. I really hope they let us do it and get a crowd into BT Studios because I think that's our full sale. Yeah, definitely. This could that's be... That, yeah, that's definitely our new home. Well, we do some tours and stuff like that because we want to go back to it. Of course, definitely, yeah. But definitely, if we can get a crowd in there, that could be such a great wee atmosphere for us to have here. Because I imagine it must be a bit more work for you guys to do. The reason why I say that is usually the crowd kind of helps with so many different things, you know, not only with just like the pacing of a match yeah. and how you feed off the crowd, also with like maybe interacting with each other as well. You don't, the, yeah. the crowd, the crowd kind of drains that out. But when I, when I watch NXT UK, I don't really hear you guys talking to your opponents. It's, you, I still have that. Yeah, that's, that's bad. Don't do that. Um, for me, like, as well, I feel like when the crowd well, when the cr- start booing me, like, I can feed off that. Yeah. I start getting like, oh, is that right? Well, you just wait to see what I'm about to do. Yeah, of like, course. Of course, like, yeah. I mean, they're, they're such a big part of, like, the adrenaline. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? The buzz, the, mm-hmm. the, the whole, um, just getting ready to go to the ring and hearing the crowd out there mm-hmm. is, you mm-hmm. know, that's enough to just fire you up together. There is nothing in the world like a British crowd. Like you can go to individual oh, 100%. cities. 100%. 100%. There is different cities with different types of crowds, but the UK crowds are like nothing I've ever seen yeah. anywhere else in the world. Yeah. Like, it's like a football crowd. Yes. Yeah, exactly, yes. exactly. So you got a, a little they bit more. Like they don't like that's it. what I'm saying. It's a, a little bit more added pressure than Americans. That's in my opinion. In my opinion. Yeah. So, uh, so Rampage Brown, what was your earliest memory of wrestling, um, and what made you decide to venture to be a wrestler yourself? Uh, so my earliest um, was I came across a sticker book, just a random uh, sticker book when I was a kid, and I was like, "Well, I saw like pictures of the Undertaker and Coco Beware and guys like this." I was like, "What is this?" And then uh, a friend of mine had found some. Uh, he, he like rented like a like a I think it was Survivor Series '89. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rented it. Sit, rented rented it, it from the video yeah. show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, I went around to stay his one night, and then he put it on. I was like, it "Was like in the African Dream?" And all, I was like, "What is this? Is is this a?" Like a thing. Yeah. This is what like grown men do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, yeah. Well, and obviously, been a kid. I, you know, I loved He Man and all that kind of stuff. So then seeing these like Neil Mallory and stuff like that, it was like real life. Car- cartoon characters. Yeah, yeah for exactly. sure. Yeah, for sure. So for me, it was like, um, yeah, it was just, it just looked like fun. And Kaylee Ray, you, you told me b- before we started the interview that you kind of got into wrestling a bit later in your your years. But what was your first earliest memory? So I remember when I first got into wrestling, like the match I was shown was British Bulldog, HBK, uh, 1992. It was, it was just such a technical match and I remember going, this is great. But when I was younger, I remember my cousins watching Rey Mysterio and Chavo Guerrero's I Quit match. And when Rey's upside down and Chavo's hitting his knee with that chair and he quits, I remember feeling that hatred for Chavo. I, I knew nothing about wrestling. I knew, I, I'd only just seen this clip happening, but I hated that man for doing this to this poor masked guy. And that's the first feeling I remember feeling like, I didn't watch it again for a while. I remember Rey Mysterio coming back at the Rumble, getting that, oh, he's back. Yeah. And that's the first moment for me that I was like, oh, okay, this, I think I'm a bit like wrestling, but I was too embarrassed to like wrestling. And 
Yeah. For anyone that thinks, oh, that wrestling silly, da da da, please just give it a chance. Oh, one hundred percent. Like you don't know what you're missing. You honestly don't know what you're missing. You saying that is, I I, I laughed because, well, I smiled mostly because uh, it's it's so interesting to see how many different people, uh, what what intrigues them and what engages them into wrestling. But there's so many crazy storylines. But like my first earliest memory would have been Hogan Warrior. That would have been the right. moment where yeah. I was like, yeah, I need to be a wrestling fan now. But um, and so yes, yeah, so so that's kind of got you into the into the business itself. Mm-hmm. Um, now you have become the NXT UK Women's Champion, and you've had a long reign. How many days have you had the reign now? Um, oh, it's, 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 it would help if I knew the date today. <laughs> um, so, but yeah. we're, it's we're over six hundred days. Well over six hundred yeah, and ten yeah, days yeah, now. Um, yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying to look for my phone for the day, <laughs> but I don't have it. Um, but we're definitely over the six ten days mark, and it will continue forever because I am the forever champion, and no one is taking this away from me. You've got a match coming up with Miko, right? Miko Tatamura. You had a match with her previously, which is yeah. deemed as a classic. Yeah. Um, do you think she might get that? Yeah, sure. Do you think she might get the edge over you this time? Absolutely not. Like no one in this world knows what it's like to wrestle Miko Satamura for that championship. I've done it before. I've done this. I know I've got this in the bag. And last question for both of you. Um, what wrestler have you not wrestled within the WWE company that you won't want to wrestle today? Uh, I, I'm going to go with Sheamus. I've, I've, I've tagged with Sheamus in Middlesbrough in the early 2000s. Right. That's the closest we've come. We were on the same team, though. Uh, but I would love to face him face to face. Two powerhouse, cool. strong style wrestlers going at it. I would love to see that. And yourself, Kay? For me, um, I'm going to throw two out there. Do you know what? Three. I'm going to go with the three women's champions that are there that are in WWE just now that aren't myself. Um, we'll go for Racket, we'll go for Rhea, and we're going to go for B. Because, yeah. like, when I went to America, the girls put everything out there and helped me do this. It's nice to see them get that. But also, I want to go in there and see who's the best. And I think you will. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, guys. Thank, Thank you. Have a good Take care. Bye. Yeah, no, that was a fun interview. I mean, it wasn't as long as I wanted it. That was a quite short compared to other interviews I had, like the Mustache Mountain and Aaliyah J and and Oliver Carter. Aaliyah James told me something very interesting about her name that you will find out next week or the week afterwards. I think I'm going to put it out the week afterwards. Uh, but one of these episodes of Kick Out, when we have an interview, she told me something interesting about her name that I did not know before. So we'll get into that later. But um, should we start back this WrestleMania backlash review? The next match, I think it was Bianca Belair defending her title since her epic win against Bian- uh, against Sasha Banks at WrestleMania. Uh, against Bailey, and in my opinion, what a opponent to choose. I think they're probably the best person to choose after the Sasha Banks job is Bailey. And I thoroughly enjoyed this match. I feel Bailey and Bian- there was a few butches in this match, a few few little errors, but that will that, that will get that sorted out for the next one because I'm sure there will be a, a rematch. But this really highlighted to me how great Bailey is. She's a ring general, man. Uh, Tay, what did you think of this match? I mean, it, exactly that because, and you know, like I haven't always been like okay, I've never been a fan of Bailey, but I was watching this match and I was like, what? she is a G. Like she is actually amazing. You know when when you see like Charlotte and Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch, you got the four horsewomen, and you're like, okay, they've all actually got to that spot where they, when they're in the ring, it doesn't matter who they're against. They will always make them look good. They will look good. Like the whole match always just works. And it was at this point when I was watching with Bianca and I was like, do you know what? Bianca's going to be a star and she's going to get to that level. But I watched and then I looked at it and I was like, actually, this is Bailey actually like pushing this match. And she's really making her look so, so good. Nearly as good as Sasha Banks. So do you know what? A Bailey, Bailey did it for me in this match. Obviously, Bianca as well. But. <clears throat> no, for sure. Yeah, you're right, Tay. Uh, Max, I remember work uh, doing uh, press interview in Brooklyn, 2016. Um, so Ace Ace couldn't make it, right? So I brought my boy Lama. That's my boy Lama. Sometimes I listen to the podcast. I don't think this is as much as he used to, but anyway. I brought him down to help me with camera work and whatnot and help me with recording the interviews and stuff. And he's not a massive wrestling fan like he used to be when he was a kid. So when he, when I brought him down in, this is 2016, to watch SummerSlam, he was like very confused by certain things that was going on and he was asking questions like, who's this, who's that? Was it 2016? I feel like it was 2017. When did Bobby Roode arrive? It must have been 2017. Because Bobby yeah. Roode arrived in 2017. So 2017, sorry. Um, but he noticed when Bailey made her entrance, 
he was confused because he was like, how is he's looking around and he's seeing the crowd going nuts for Bailey. And he's like, how is this a success? Like mm-hmm. she's dressed like a little schoolgirl with pigtails in her hair and she's coming out with inflatable dummies and, and, and have a little cartoonish kind of gimmick kind of thing. But she's a star, right? She was a massive star. Does that dish prove how good she really is to make that gimmick work? Yeah. I mean, the, the gimmick was very natural from the beginning days. She just wanted to be a, a wrestling fan, like I'm a wrestling fan girl. That's what it was. And everyone kind of bought into it so much so that in her height of everything in, in NXT, I actually thought WWE have got their female John Cena in Bailey. I thought that like, too. I really did think that. And obviously the character did well on the main roster, but the main roster fans are more demanding, don't, don't have that kind of loyalty like the NXT fans have. Um, always want change, always want to be pleased and stuff. So eventually, Bailey switched up her gimmick. But even, even this, and I, all I can call it is a Karen kind of gimmick yeah. that, that she has, is so brilliant. Because it's now, it's like that girl that we all kind of got introduced to, the girl next door with a ponytail and everything, she, she's grown up now. Like... She and she ain't taking the trash that this world has to offer and all of that kind of stuff. And um, I loved her promo on Friday on SmackDown to Bianca Belair saying that basically she said to Bianca Belair, you remind me of me back then with the ponytail coming out, hugs, smiling, you know, wanting to be loved by everyone and that it's not going to get you very far and all of that kind of stuff, um, which obviously reigns true. And even from, from what some of us have been saying, that Bianca Belair's title run so far hasn't been set alight because she's just kind of happy to be here with this championship right now. So um, yeah, Bailey's fantastic. The the match was fantastic, and I think Bailey, I'm um, sorry, Bianca Belair, like Tay was saying earlier, I think Bianca Belair and Ruby, not Ruby, right? Ru- What's her face? The Raw Women's Champion, Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley. Um, I think, um, yeah, Belair and Ripley are going to benefit so much from wrestling amongst the four horsewomen and the likes of Asuka in their prime and, you know, kind of be brought to these great matches. By the time that they are, you know, because they're probably a few years younger than them, um, Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair are going to be massive, massive talents because they've had, like, they've sat under the tutelage of these four or five women um, and the horsemen and that. So, yeah, top match. Very good match. Um, Excited to see these two lock horns again. I definitely want to see it. I want to see a rematch. All right, let's talk about the two main events now, the two championship matches. Uh, Let's go with the first one, the triple threat match for the WWE title, Bobby Lashley versus Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre. This was actually quite decent. I was actually quite surprised by this match. Uh, I had no interest going forward to watch this match at all. I didn't have any interest in it at all. But, um, yeah, some really good spots. Uh, Lashley, I like I like the, the double suplex Lashley and um, Drew did on Strowman. Strowman did a cannonball outside from the apron, nearly nearly broke his neck. But that's, I think Strowman you know, was the MVP of this match. I think, yeah, he, kinda, he did kind of carry it, didn't he? Strowman was uh, I think there was a spot where Lashley did a suplex on Drew on the steel railway, st- mm. the steel ramp. Uh, Drew threw Lashley through that Titan Tron where the electrical sparks come out. Uh, Strowman was just mashing man up in the ring <laughs> with, with all kinds of madness. Um, this was a good match. Uh, let's go to let's go to you first, Max. Max, talk to us about the spots in this match. Just a big beefy powerhouse kind of match which we all have been doing for the best part of the last four months with between Sheamus and Drew McIntyre and Lashley and McIntyre um yeah this, this 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 that's all that this was and I think we all thought Bobby Lashley would retain um done it in a smart way you know he threw out Drew McIntyre quickly speared and pinned Strowman but um yeah they they knocked it out of the park these matches have to be it's kind of concise 10 minutes because you can't you can't fight like this for much longer than that, like without someone actually getting hurt. So yeah, I think it was just the right kind of um a lot of like electricity just kind of packed into one one match and they got it over and done with. Um gonna be interesting to see where they go from here because I still think Raw lacks 
you know, enough challenges around that title scene. But um, yeah, it was proper good. Tay. What, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Go on. What is next for Lashley? Who is next for Lashley after this match? Oh, I don't even know. Who else is <laughs> who else is like Who's those there? Levels, apart from someone coming back, you know? Mm-hmm. But you know that, yeah, yeah. You, you, I know you're saving that for a certain period of time. Yeah. But, but who in your like? Okay, forget who you think it is. Who would you like to see face Lashley in the meantime before he meets the beast? Do you know what? Just because of, I mean, he's great anyway. But because of his performance, like in the last couple of months. Um, I'd have Seamus drop to Damien Priest and have Seamus against him. I like that. I like that a lot. Max, mm-hmm. who do you want to see Lashley lock on with before he locks on with the Beast? I mean, so this is who's going to basically give Lashley a good match and lose. Yes. <laughs> and show up tonight, hopefully, on Raw. Mm. So while he's cutting a promo, MVP's cutting a promo. See, my man Bobby Lashley, he beat McIntyre, he beat Strowman. There's nobody that can beat Bobby Lashley. And then music hits. Who's this music? Who's the music? Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? I don't. I don't think it's anyone new. Shall I say who it is? Are you gonna say something controversial? No, I'm totally wrong because it's probably not gonna be this. Okay, but... go on. Basking in his glory. Yeah, well, I don't think I don't. He shouldn't lose straight out of the bat. That's the issue. Y- yes, he should. <laughs> yeah, he should lose. You said. Yes, I think I think it'd just be good to get him in that main event picture, have him look like a threat, and but he's not there yet. I hear that. I think depending if they're gonna put him, obviously the next pay per view is Hell in a Cell. Um, they could do oh, Lashley yeah. versus Drew in a hell I don't know. I don't, I don't want it anymore. I don't know. No, I know. No, I don't no. want it anymore either. No I don't more. want it anymore either. But you know, it's the typical we've we've been fighting. Let's put them in a cell, sort of stuff. Um, or they could do Strowman. I, I think maybe Strowman's gonna hang around Lashley for a for a minute. So I, I you know, if you didn't say who's gonna return, I would have picked Strowman to be to be that guy. I hope um, it's not. I just want someone new now. I don't want bro. There's nobody. <laughs> there is no that's one. That's the sad like, truth, isn't it? That is the sad. Truth. Unless, unless, like you said, it's Keith Lee and maybe a Damian Priest can climb to that height. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> about that's about it. <laughs> I think I think next the next head of the cell match is going to be Priest versus that zombie that showed up at ECW that time and Sandman came the shit out of him. I think that's <laughs> All right. Well, we still, yeah. We'll, I guess, we'll find out tonight on Raw what they decide. Um, Before we move, because I thought you were gonna say someone controversial. Did you hear who was backstage on Raw last last week? No. Velveteen Dream. Oh, I did hear about this. Mm. Oh Lord. So I think if they're going to do it, they need to do it now before crowds come back. If they debut him when this when crowds are back they're in trouble. I think we, they need to try, and the key word is try, because the crowd is pretty unforgiving on if, everything involved in Velveteen Dream right now. I think we need to try and bed him in before crowds return. Tay, you and I have both seen the love that man used to get from a live crowd or from the WWE Universe in person. We saw him wrestle many times, I think. We have, both of us have seen him live. That's all gone now, isn't it? I mean, do you know what is so difficult about Velveteen Dream is because, like, he's gone through this, all these kind of things, but his personality is, like, a little bit less than his character. Like, he can be quite a dick in real life. <laughs> like, let's not let's be real. He can be quite a dick in real life. So him trying to come back from all the stuff in the past, whether it's true or not, I think it was false allegations. I'm not quite sure. I can't quite remember. But even if he's going to try and come back, the way his personality is set up isn't that nice. So people aren't, even if he's found, you know, not guilty, people are still going to be like, no, but you're still an arsehole. Because he's still an arsehole. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. I remember Tay in New Orleans when he ignored Tay. 
And uh, even even the interview I had with him, I know he was in character, but he was being a bit weird. In the interview, that interview was one of the awkwardest interviews I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> like, I was asking normal questions, but he was going on like it was arithmetic or something. He was going on this Imagine stupid. the arithmetic. <laughs> He was going on hella mad. I was like, okay, cool, man. <laughs> Arithmetic, you know. What was, what was this thing that he said to you? It was the best line. He's like, do you anticipate the birth of a child or something? Yeah, what was the thing yeah. that he was saying? Yeah. It was so I, I, think I, like, I was like, I was like, uh, I think I said something about, oh, um, uh, what is your, I first asked him, about what's your plans or your strategy going forward? Because it was that ladder match, isn't it, Max? It was that ladder match with the North EC3. American one. Yeah, the North American one, Garga Gargano. Brilliant and, match, brilliant, yeah. brilliant match. And it was, I said, what is your strategy against these athletes? He goes, strategy? What do you mean strategy? Why would I have a strategy? I was like, well... And he goes, and he goes oh, my strategy is simple. It's going to go up there, go up the ladder and grab the belt. As, as easy as that. I said, well, I said, well, it's not really easy as that because you have like five other people in the ring that's going to stop you. And he goes, he goes, what do you want to do? You want to hog tie them, uh, hog tie them up, all tie them up by the ramp. But and then but what I do while, it, while while they do their entrance, and I was like, if you have to. And then there was like, and then there was like a long pause, and we were both was not saying nothing. So I was like. Uh, I feel like uh, you you really made a name of yourself with the matches with um, Alistair Black. Do you think the matches with Alistair Black really helped you, you know, build a name for yourself within the wrestling industry? He's like, yes. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and what do you anticipate with these matches? Like, how did you anticipate the? Do you anticipate the birth of a child? Do you anticipate the the sun shining on the world? Or something? I was like, bro, what are you on? Bro? This is not even this is not even hard. Like you're making this really hard for me. But I do think he was in character because after the after they stopped recording, he kind of smiled. He looked at me and he smiled and he and and he shook my hand. So I think he was in character. But he was not in character when we met him later on that night and Tay was trying to talk to him and he just gave Tay the cold shoulder. And Tay was like, he's a prick. And I was like, no, nah, he's a character. He's a character. Oh, no, no, no. Looking back now, I think Tay was definitely right. That's him. That's him. That's that's him. But anyway, yeah, for those who don't know, haven't listened to that interview, go back to our archives at the kick out. Find the one with Velveteen Dream. I'm, I'm not going to tell you what episode. I can't remember what episode it is, but there's an episode where you will find Velveteen Dream on there and you can listen back to that. Um, All right, let's talk about the main event. Roman Reigns versus Cesaro for the Universal Championship. Jimmy Uso has returned, and he's trying to stop Jay from being at the side of Roman Reigns. Tay, have you been watching SmackDown Weekly? Because I haven't. And have you been enjoying this build-up? From what I see in the promo package, this looks really good. Yeah, no, I've been I've been really enjoying this segment, um, especially, yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy came back. Did Jimmy? Yeah, so Jimmy comes back, and he's like, you can see it's like the friction that's building up until they kind of then get together. And I'm enjoying this part. And I, I kind of want them to long it out a little bit, a little bit longer to the next pay-per-view that they're still a little bit shaky. You know, it just helps with the, like, the storyline. And yeah, the match yesterday was, well, I thought it was amazing. Um, Cesaro really held his own. And I like that it was, it was like touch and go with both of them. Like they both were like pulling in their power moves and everything, and you were like, "Oh shit!" Like who's gonna win? Like it was, it was really good. Max, yeah, man. The the whole story I think has just been so good. Roman's obviously got the whole family thing that's distracting him. Um, Jimmy said that you know you can't beat Cesaro, so he's kind of gone out and put on a show. He's calling out Daniel Bryan that technically no longer works for the company, whilst he's beating up Cesaro like hey DB like this this is your boy and I'm I'm beating him at you lot's team called wrestling like I'm good at this aren't I like he's the whole character stuff is just completely <laughs> so good down to a T like he he's put out another video on his I think it's on WWE's Twitter today while he's in the gym saying that you know um you guys said that this was your thing wrestling and stuff and I beat apparently someone that's one of the best wrestlers in the world like what does that make me now and um I think just where we go from here is going to be proper good he's called out Jimmy Uso in that video said that you know Jimmy don't try text me now don't tell your brother to text me don't try call me 
We'll link up on Friday on SmackDown and then you can explain yourself about I can't beat Cesaro like you're mad, bruv. And he's, I think, with Hell in a Cell being the next pay-per-view, they got to do, they got to do Jimmy versus Roman Reigns. No, it's going to be, it's going to be Usos versus Roman Reigns. What, like a handicap match? Yeah. Stack them. Was it? What's the phrase? Stack, What's the stack phrase? them, pin stack them, or pin them. whatever it is. Yeah, he's gonna like, pack the Usos on top of each other like he did Brian and Edge, and he's gonna pin them. Because what's I, gonna happen is the build up. It's, this is what I'm predicting anyway. Yeah. The build the build up will be Jimmy's. Jimmy's reliant to conform. He's not gonna do what Jay's doing. He's not gonna do it. That's already apparent. He's not gonna conform. He's not gonna let Reigns talk to him like a bitch. So Reigns Reigns gonna keep trying to antagonize him. And it comes to a point where Jay's at the fence still, and then it comes to a point where Reigns does attack Jimmy, and and in the day, brothers, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's going to happen, but I think it's going to happen within this Hell in a Cell match. So obviously, remember, Jay and Roman had a Hell in a Cell. When Roman beat up the referee and they opened the door of the cell to let the referee out, that's when Jimmy ran in to say, try and save Jay, and then he eventually put Jimmy in the chokehold, and Jay said, I quit, or whatever the case was. So... I think that's going to be like very similar. Jimmy is going to verse Reigns. Jay is literally going to be on the outside of the cell, so conflicted that he can't actually get in the cell and help whoever he wants to help. Um, and then it may lead to, yeah, like you're saying, the turn against Roman or who, who knows. Right. No, the, you, what you're saying might be true. And so that means that would have been a whole year from the last year's epic Jimmy and Reigns match? Not not a year. I think last year Hell in a Cell was in November or so, so it's just about it been a matter of months. They've moved, they've moved this Hell in a Cell forward because uh, I think yeah. they I think want right. money in the bank to be the next month, in, sorry, in July. They want money in the bank to be the first pay-per-view where the crowds are there. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Which All makes right. me think one thing, to be honest. I think, I think, think? Edge, I think Edge is going to win money in the bank and cash in on Roman same night. No, I do don't want it to that? happen. Why do, well, you, why do you think that? They, they, I think they want a same night cash in if they're having fans back at Money in the Bank. It's it's a big show for them, innit? Like they want the crowd there for a reason. So I think someone's someone's going to cash in their their briefcase that night. Um, after winning it, I don't I don't see Roman losing this title unless someone cashes in on him. He's too good otherwise. He can't be beaten face to face knowing that a man. You know, he, I've got to face this man. But if it's a sneak attack and Edge is the king of sneak attacks, might be. Okay. I remember you said that when we watched the pay-per-view next month. We'll see, what you, see if you're right or not. Well, yeah, I don't want to be right, but still. Um, but yeah, Cesaro reigns. Very good match. Uh, very slow pace. Very methodical. Uh, and he got really heated up towards the end. I know Cesaro has... N- didn't do the swing on Reigns, but he has swung Reigns before, right? In in the in the Shield days, am I right? I think he swung Reigns when they had a some type of qualifier match for the WWE Championship a couple of years ago. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So after Reigns defeats Cesaro, Seth Rollins shows up in a very weird, dripply outfit, and he attacks Cesaro. So this Seth and Cesaro feud is continuing. Tay. What do you see going forward between Seth and Cesaro? Um, I don't think it's going to go anywhere in terms of like championships or anything. I think they're just going to give us great matches, to be honest, like because they're they're two good workers. They're definitely like any other pay per view. If you put them in a match, you know it's going to be a good match. So they just need them to kind of help with all the other bit kiddie matches that are coming out at the moment so i just think we'll just get a series of good matches from them uh do you think you ever see the win the big one he, didn't, he came short last night but do you think there'll be a chance for him to win a wwe universal or wwe title in the future i don't know you know i don't i i think when the crowds come back that's when we'll know because it's, it's going to have to be a Daniel Bryan, Kofi Kingston, like that kind of thing to be like, listen, put the title on him or we're writing. It's, it's going to be that kind of thing. Max? The way, the way that Cesaro has ended the last two SmackDowns, I think if crowds were there, they would be in trouble. They they would be having those conversations like Tay just had, just said. Um, but I just, I for now, I don't see it. Roman is 
too much right now. If the draft happened and he went over to Raw, maybe. If he goes in that momentum, maybe. I think Cesaro to be the guy to overcome Roman ain't going to happen. He's going to re-enter this feud with Rollins. He's already beaten Rollins twice. So I'm guessing Rollins is going to win their next match, which will knock Cesaro down another peg. So it's like, is he is he done at the top? <laughs> like this little run he's had, is he is it almost come come to an end? Coming to an end? Like, okay, yeah, I see what you mean. Before we rank WrestleMania Backlash out of five, we got some questions from our kickout listeners. Uh, this one is from Anafi from Rest Things. Big up Anafi. It says, "What was that ending last night? Was it needed? Did you feel Seth Rollins?" Needed to show up and attack Cesaro last night, Tay? I mean, I don't think it was necessary, but I mean, I feel like it was just them telling us, like, here's you've had your Cesaro now, guys. <laughs> We're taking him back. That I thought to me that that's what that was. Yeah. Max. I agree with Tay. It's like you this is who you wanted us to push. You know, Romans beat him. They then sent in Jay Uso to beat him up. They then sent in Rollins to beat him up. It's like Ha ha, that's your guy. When you know you're done with him now, that's him done at the top. And I thought it was a very odd way to to kill someone who was kind of meant to be this hero against the villain Roman Reigns. Um, and like I said, I think Rollins will probably beat him the next time they they lock up. And you know that's two big high profile losses back to back. This one from Patterson Dolphy. Two questions. One, I personally think the marketing decision for Army of the Dead and WWE was a great idea. This is what he says. It got people talking. What do you think? Tay. I think good for you, Aldelphi. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Max? Uh, you know what? Like... WWE gave us a very good pay per view with one blunder, and it was yes, it was a very big blunder. You know, the match was too much. I think we probably let this slide if this is a our truth versus someone else. You know, but they, you know, Damian Priest, like we said earlier, they clearly rate him. Miz was WWE champion a matter of months ago. Let's not forget, mm -hmm. like it's just the wrong people involved and you know morrison should not be in this kind of spot either like yeah i i, I don't particularly mind it we're watching a, a you know a tv show at the end of the day like to, but just do it with the correct people like don't you know we're, we're out here questioning if damien priest can even recover from this so yeah just do it with the right people in the future his second question was when do you think dominic turns on ray i know it's gonna happen that's what he says. <laughs> so do you think Dominic is going to turn on Ray eventually? I, I I don't see it. Um, But I don't see them holding the tag belts for long either. I think once the whole Reigns Uzo thing sorts that that, that situation out, um, I think Uzo are going to take take the titles from these from these two. Um, but yeah, I, I can't see Dominic turning on him. Um, Novak 84. Here's a question for the kickout team. Do you think Taker and The Rock are headliners for the next two Hall of Fames with 38 in Texas and 39 in Hollywood? It seems obvious. Tay? I mean, yeah, you could be right. Um, definitely for the Hollywood Rock, I would say, put him in the Hall of Fame. Um, it's a good shot. Next. I think, I think um, yeah, bang on with Taker. That's that must must be it because it's in Dallas. I think the Rock one, if if it's the Rock would make hundred percent sense, but I'm not sure if he's going to officially retire yet. Uh, maybe if he gets the Reigns match, then yeah, he will. But I think if it's not him, it might be Batista because obviously Batista yeah, because would never happen because he delayed because he delayed it this year. Yeah, 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 and he's very much LA Hollywood now. So yeah. And last question from uh, Mick Conlin, who did a great rendition of the Pick Out theme, um, the live acoustic version of that on his uh, violin. You should check it out on his uh, YouTube channel. Shout out to Violin Mick. If you could only keep one gimmick match, what would it be? I'll keep the chamber if Michael Cole was banned from dishing out shite stats about how it was made. 
<laughs> Thank you, Rick. Uh, so if you could keep one gimmick match, what would it be? I'm going to go with the obvious for me. And I think Taze, this is going to be Taze's answer as well. The Royal Rumble. I think that's the, oh, greatest, yeah. the greatest gimmick match of all time. Taze, do you agree with that answer? Absolutely. I love Royal Rumbles. Yeah. Max, what would you say? Yeah, I, I mean, Royal Rumble slipped my mind. It's become such a, like a non-gimmick. It's like a, just yeah. like a furniture. You see what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah. Mind. But other than that, I think what I've come to love in recent years is the money in the bank. Although they've been kind of messing up how the winner gets booked and stuff. I think maybe money in the bank is a, is a strong, strong um, gimmick as well. All right. Let's, let's, let's rank. Oh, actually, before we do ranking, I didn't get to find out the other tag team that won father and son. So it might not ever have happened, but if it has happened, I'm going to find out and I'm going to mention it in the next episode. But what I have got compiled here is a list of father and sons who has won the same title. It doesn't mean they've won it together or anything like that. So obviously, like, example, Rocky Johnson, The Rock, has both won a tag team championship, right? Mr. Perfect and his son, Curtis Axel, has both won the Intercontinental Championship. The British Bulldog and his son, they, uh, Harry Smith, has both won the tag team championship. Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream Baby, and Dustin Rhodes has both won the United States Championship. And I guess you could put Cody in. Cody's, no, Dustin, Dusty Rhodes has never won Intercontinental Championship. Cody, Cody's won the US Championship and he's won the, the IWGP US Championship as well. Has he won the US Championship? Cody. In, yeah, in I'm, sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure Cody won it in WWE. Hmm. Okay. I don't remember that. I know he definitely won IC. I don't know if he's won Yeah, he definitely won IC. I, I, to be honest, uh, maybe I'm making it up. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but um, he won the IWGP United States Championship. I know that. But Dusty's never won that. Oh, well, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Ricochet. Uh, sorry, Ricochet. Rikishi and the Usos, obviously, WWE Tag Team Championship. Okay. Classic. Chavo Guerrero, the original Chavo Guerrero, and Chavo Guerrero Sr., a junior, won the Cruiserweight Championship. Both of us won Cruiserweight Championships. Ric Flair and David Flair has both won United States Championships. The Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, and his son, Ted DiBiase Jr., has both won Tag Team Championships. And I think that's all I've got. If I'm forgetting anyone, I don't know. But no, no. there might be some more. But there we go. And obviously, together, Ray and his son, Dominic, has won the tag team championships um all right let's rank wrestlemania backlash out of five uh let's go with tay first i'll give it a solid four really even with the zombie stuff yeah with that but if, if you take that out literally just take out the zombies leave the match in the even it's, it's, it was a way it was a really good pay for you okay next yeah i was gonna be more generous and that I'd say four, maybe four and a quarter, pushing four and a half. If it wasn't for the zombie match, I thought this was, yeah, probably the best pay per view they've done in a while, like from top to bottom. It was a very good pay per view. So I'm going to say three and a half. <laughs> but it was very good. It was very good. I just, yeah, I can't give it a four, but it was very good. Okay, well, thank you. I think that's it for today's episode. We will be coming back with more content. We'll see what happens on Raw tonight. I might be joining Mex or Tate if she wants to come join us as well, maybe this Thursday to talk about NXT and AEW and Monday Night Raw. So stay tuned for some more episodes and more content. We've got some more special guests coming on the show soon. Before we sign out, Tay, where can people find you on the social media platforms? At the Kickout Podcast. Oh, <laughs> what can they also find you? At the Kickout Podcast, Twitter, Instagram, and Apple Podcasts. And guess where you can find Skillet? At the Kickout Podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys.